Here's something that's really worrying, and this is thanks to the Samara Center for Democracy. Um, they analyzed over 3.6 million tweets received by over 1,000 political candidates. Bear with me, I'm gonna read a little bit here. Um, not as well as Lisa would, though. Uh, I read out loud uh, for Across a 10 elections in Canada, <laughs> um, federal, provincial, municipal, it has measured the abuse of content uh, that candidates receive, candidates receive online during elections, and the findings are extremely worrying, and here's a sample. In 2021 federal election, hundreds of thousands of toxic tweets, that's over 475,000 were sent to candidates, political candidates, that's one tweet every seven seconds. Many of these messages used profane and or threatening language. Women candidates, of course, faced the most toxicity online, over five times more abuse on social media than men. It's really depressing. Diverse candidates were also more likely to face abuse online. It's a big question, but what impact do you think all of this is going to have on that bigger picture and the, wow. the kinds of politicians who end up leading us. This is the absolute crux of all of this. What has social media, what have we allowed as a society, social media to do to our democracy? Because now we're talking about um, certainly so many women politicians and journalists. That's the one thing maybe we all have in common as women is that we are the pin cushion for social media. I, I always used to say, you know, I weigh five pounds and the rest of me is thick skin because you need it with what is coming at women largely and racialized women even more so as you've just pointed out. Yes. I think the, the, the fear here is that we won't be attracting um, strong, confident, uh, you know, intelligent people to politics or, or journalism. Yeah. It's an easy reason to turn away because it's hard and it's painful. 